Teachers have read it. What is the most disturbing thing you've heard a student say? I'm a little late. I had a student who was deathly afraid of using the bathroom because monsters who wanted to get her were in the vents. Turns out her dad used to abuse her in the bathroom. During my second year student teaching, a teaching and paid internship. A student brought a few bags of heroin to school in his backpack. He pulled them out in the hallway to show his friends before recess. He said I brought treasure from home. My mom says it's worth more than me. The kids were ooing and eyeing. The most f ked up part is that the school expelled him. We didn't help him at all. I think about him still. Nine years later. I had a student tell me about his parents leaving salt around the house. Bizarre. But I didn't connect the dots until they were arrested. Turns out. That was cocaine. I was thinking Winchesters. Oh so many. Colon. A kid came in upset and we finally got out what the problem was. This mom told him that he caused her to miscarry because he was such a fck up. Another kid came to school acting off. By lunchtime. He finally told someone that his dad got arrested the night before. The dad made him take off his clothes and beat the shti out of him with an electrical cord. The kid ran outside into the streets of Detroit. Naked. Thank god a nice older man found him. Put him a blanket on him and took him to the police. Dad got arrested and of course CPS got involved. CPS was looking for a placement. Kid assumed he would stay with his aunt, dad's sister, but learned that wasn't possible because that guy wasn't his dad. So within a day, kid got shti beaten out of him. Found out his dad wasn't his real dad. Put into foster care. Kid said something like, my whole life is over. He was 10. A 6 year old barely getting out the words my mama choked me between tears. A second grader having a full meltdown about his low grade saying his dad was going to make him sleep outside again if he found out. These are some of the things that keep us up at night. Heartbreaking. Paraprofessional in an elementary school. A kid looked at me and casually said my mom died Sunday. Her funeral is next week. And shrugged. That's the emotional numbness you get after the cry buckets run empty and you've said and thought everything a thousand times over. One of my students parents were fighting. Dad left home then came back to talk. They went out to the car to fight so the kids wouldn't hear. He shot and killed the mother then himself. The girl came to school the next day and just said I have nowhere else to go. Coached elementary pay. Had a 9 year old student call me an infested tampon sucker. More surprised than angry. At the time I was 23 and never heard an insult like that. While student teaching. Had a student shout you guys wanna see the gun in my backpack. He was trying to joke. But security was called and the intervention specialist kept all students away from the bag. The one year I taught 5th grade. I overheard a boy talking to his friends about how they should corner a female student in the bathroom and gang up a her while someone stood watch at the door. A couple months later. He wrote a very graphic letter that was passed around class about how my giant boobs were the only reason he came to school and went into explicit detail of how he wanted to titif ck me. This was 5th grade. He was 10. How on earth was he aware about gang up a and titif king? I can't imagine what he was exposed to at home to have that kind of knowledge. I stick to the primary grades now and I've heard some heartbreaking stories. But this one definitely sticks out as the most disturbing. One of my students threatened to kill my dog while I was out walking her. This was after he had cussed me out. Ripped up his work. And disturbed the class. It was his second day in class. My dad wants to kill me with his hunting gun. E. 9 years old. It wasn't a student. But his father. A guy came up to me on parents night and told me to call him if his kid needed a good yelling. Since his kid was such a useless fck up. While I stood there in shock. He added. He's always been lazy. But he's been worse since his roommate at his last school killed himself. Don't hesitate to call me if he pulls that bullshit. FCK that guy. 
that his abuser used to stuff socks in his mouth while he beat him up so he couldn't scream. I was teaching a high school jewelry metal shop class and some students alerted me to one student trying to sneak out some of the metal files. When confronted. He said he wanted to use them to stab people in the halls. I had him removed permanently. To say the least. A kindergarten. Student drew a picture of himself floating in outer space smiling and pointing at a giant red button on his space suit. I asked what the button was for. He said. It's so I can suicide myself so I can be with Jesus. His completely embarrassed mother responded to my concerned email explaining that this portrait was likely the fruit of two separate conversations she'd had with him that week. The first explaining suicide bombers. The second explaining that his recently deceased grandfather was in a better place with Jesus. Kids are wild. I once had a piano student who said he couldn't practice at home because his stepfather would beat him to have to listen to it. No one knows where my mom and dad are. Or if they're even alive. Logan. A kid in a class I subbed for who was being raised by his grandmother. Had an international college student write a paper about his family. And a big. Big part of it was talking about how he was jealous of his cousin's dog. So he drowned it in the ocean in front of said cousin. When I asked him why. He said he wanted the dog. And if it wasn't his. It didn't deserve to live. I gave the paper to my bosses. And he ultimately got deported for a bunch of violations and red flags. Runners up are a girl explaining she decided to go to college after her best friend was murdered in front of her during a gang turf war. And another girl who tried to explain to the class why torture PRN movies like Megan is missing are the best movies ever. My student recently told a story about how her dog died. She said she was stay with her aunt for a few weeks over the summer and her dog was home with her mom when the student returned home. She asked for the dog. Mom said she didn't know where the dog was and told the student to look upstairs. The student found the dog dead in an unused bedroom. Mom's reaction was oh I guess I forgot to feed him. Student now lives with the aunt full time because mom often forgot to feed the kid too. This one student once told me. I'm prompted I like red cars. Because that's the color of car my mom used when she left us to do drugs. Second grade teacher here. A student recently told me his parents have a vibrating bed. I had to hold back laughing. During a class field trip. A girl in class casually mentioned before everybody that the road we were driving down was the same one she'd tried to kill herself on the year before because she was bullied so badly. She said she'd been driving and floored it. Hoping to hit a tree. Only to change her mind because she didn't want to hurt her family. It just came out of nowhere, and from the girl who was generally considered incredibly popular. Kind. And well liked. We saw our neighbor die last night. Completely deadpan. Me. Oh my goodness. What happened? Are you okay? Them. He was racing his lawnmower and it dragged him to death. It went really fast. Me. Are you okay? Would you like to talk to the counselor? Them. Nor. We're fine. We've seen it before. The Meekles twin 7th grade boys in the Ozarks of the Southern Midwest. USA. I had a student, under 10, tell me he wanted to cut my head off and watch me bleed. I had the audacity to tell him that he needed to put his crayons up before he could get his play dough out. A student once told me he was going to burn his house down. He talked about how that would ruin his house and how he could possibly hurt his mom and dad or himself. His reply was. I'd make sure my mom was dead before I burn it down. This kid is 8. Edit. Thanks for all the upvotes. I work as a special education teacher. Specifically with students who are emotionally disturbed or have other disorders that impact their behavior. This isn't even the most f up thing I've heard. Just one of the most memorable. Also for those of you wondering about the possibility of abuse. I truly do not believe he is being abused. He has been my student for several years and it's not uncommon for him to make disturbing statements. In fact. If I had a dollar for every time he told me he was going to poison or stab someone. 
I would almost have enough money to fully fund my classroom. I had a senior student describe to a friend in class how she was going to FCK her boyfriend that night. The boyfriend is also a student at school. It got disturbing when she asked me for my opinion. Trying to convince a 17 year old student that drugs are not the way to go and that he has a full life ahead of him when he says. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna be dead or in jail by the time I'm 25. He had been told he was nothing his whole life and he absolutely believed it. Spent up until he graduated trying to prove him wrong. Did it. Oh goodness. Thank you kind redditors for the awards. Unfortunately. I have since left teaching at that school and don't have a way to contact him. Last we talked. He was thinking of trade school. He, 6th grade, came to school with a bruised face and told me he got pistol whipped and his dad got murdered the week before. This kiddo cried in my arms. I let him sit in my class with his head down all day. He missed school for a bit a couple weeks later and I was worried sick. His girlfriend told me he was in juvie for weed. It kept happening but substances got harder. I think about that baby all the time. By 7th grade he was too hard to open up to me and we didn't keep in touch. I think about him and his girlfriend, another favorite student, constantly. They really throwing 6th graders in juvie for fking weed? That's some shit if I've ever heard it. Especially if he was dealing with the death of a parent. Man was just trying to feel better. And then he was punished for it. FCK that shit. He needs therapy. Last weekend I sent positive emails to the families of all of my students. Because remote learning is hard and the kids are really stepping up. On Tuesday. When I saw one of my classes for the first time since sending the messages. A girl said to me. That email you sent made my dad happy. He doesn't like me that much. And it made him like me. My heart broke for that poor girl. She's bright. Friendly. And hardworking. I asked her, privately, if she was safe at home and if there was anything I could do to help. She told me her dad liked her brother much better. I had a student who was sweet and innocent to adults. However. When alone with other kids he would curse at them and manipulate them to do his bidding. When the other students would complain. The student would act innocent and deflect anything that was said to him. I couldn't prove anything when I expressed my concerns to mom. Mom played the victim. One day. However. I introduced Flipgrid, a video recording service for assignments. To which the student went on video and started spewing racial slurs to another student. On video. This boy exposed himself. I sent the video to our principal. Mom gets called in to have a conference. Mom plays the victim again, about his behavior. The student gets transferred shortly after. My mom's a teacher and she says there was a student that used to make these little paper drug packets and he didn't even know what they were. She says that the mother was a drug dealer and would make him make them all day long if he wasn't in school. Safe to say the police were involved after certain things happened. Like her never turning up to the school to collect him one night and other stuff. Pretty weird how a child was making literal drug packets and had no idea. He was just proud of them because that was the only thing he was taught how to do at home. I had a girl tell me her father had our her from the age of 3-7. She started out difficult and by the time she graduated we had formed a great bond. One year. I was teaching K at a title 1 school and one of my students came to school with a band-aid on her forehead. I asked her what happened and she told me her dad had thrown a book at her head and made her bleed. I called CPS and was later told the school counselor that she was removed from the home because dad was physically and s sorely abusing her. I had a 6th grader that I was always rousing for never having his chroma book charged, I was really his softie that always enabled him and basically any other neglectful student, to charge it. Otherwise he, they, couldn't do work. One day he said, M. X. You'll be proud. My mom had to get up at 4am to bail dad out of jail and took us with her. So I remembered to charge my chroma book before school. I wasn't disturbed exactly. But was grateful that I hadn't been too hard on him. I was definitely saddened. Though. 
was an aide in a guidance office. The most disturbing was a kid we'll call Tyler. He had severe social adjustment issues and tended to say things that creeped people out. One day. He comes in wanting to talk to a counselor. I was playing receptionist that day and told him I'd let them know. And asked what was up. He very blankly says. I tried to walk out into traffic yesterday. This was obviously alarming. So I brought him straight to one of their offices. He repeats what he told me. And this. Fking. Bitch counselor says. You need to come back later. I'm working on college admission stuff for other students. He just kind of sighed and left. The counselor's comment is more disturbing than the kids. Not from a student. And not from me but from a teacher friend. Parent. Oh. You can just hit her. I hit her all the time. It's fine. Just hit her. A child stomped on a frog. After talking with them. They told me before killing the frog. They told it to say hi to their dad who lived in heaven. Spoke to mom about the incident said dad lives in Florida but told the kid they were dead. I was talking to second graders about body parts. I explained that joints are what make your limbs move. Three little girls standing together. Girl 1. Do you know where your joints are? Girl 2. I don't smoke. Girl 1. Confused F. Girl 3. Well. Girl 3 is a mom friend. I can tell. A student in juvie once told me one of the reasons he kept coming back was. It's the only place I had treated like a human being. That shit hit me hard. I heard a student say to another teacher who was pregnant at the time I hope your baby dies. And the really sad part? She had a miscarriage a few weeks later. It was horrifying. Did it. Wow this really blew up. So the teacher is okay. She ended up getting pregnant again and having a beautiful baby. As for the student. He, obviously, has some pretty severe behavior problems related to trauma. After several long term suspensions. The district decided our school wasn't a good fit for him and sent him to a special school for kids with behavioral disabilities. I worked in group homes and schools with kids and adults with developmental disabilities. Had to remove a kid from class once cause he kept whispering in a creepy voice. Let me see it. I won't tell anyone. You know I like to look at your pretty little penis and other variations of things that were not really okay. The kid was nonverbal 90% of the time and when he did repeat things it was mostly from his abuse. It was awful. Luckily he was in a safe place by then. Still incredibly sad. If this school allowed violence. There'd be a lot of body bags coming from the silent creepy kid who fit every description of your typical school shooter. The rest of the semester with him was fun. Had a 6 year old scream I'm gonna cook you up and eat you. To the daycare director. He had a lot more outbursts like that. Where he would go into specific details of how he would harm you. He was also obsessed with axes and knives. And would draw them constantly. His parents swear they didn't let him watch anything violent and had no idea where he was learning any of this. He was diagnosed as on the autism spectrum and the parents were getting him therapy and honestly seemed like they were trying to do their best. Feels a little light compared to some in here. But what's the point of empathy? There's one that made me stop in my tracks. This is the same student. H.S. Who said that the only reason to be nice to someone is because you want something from them. Sorry mister. I'm gonna be out while I go to rehab. Obviously you hear about students using drugs and all that. I have to. The first was that we should all start doing cocaine to make it through finals. The second was that we should turn the children of immigrants into meat for American citizens. Semicolon. Edit for the million of you asking. The student had no idea about Swift. 7th grade biology teacher here. A kid once told me. I want to eat your ass like I ate my mom's. I thought he was joking but a few months later. Had a young girl, grade 5, that asked if she could come home with me for Christmas because she didn't want to be at home for the break. We knew her home life was rough because parents were in a gang. 
I tried my best to assure her that everything would be okay and that we loved her. I also tried to add that her family loved her in their own way too. She replied. If they love me. Why do they hit me? Thankfully. We got her removed from the situation not long after and every Christmas I think of her and hope she is doing alright. I shudder to think what would have happened to her if she had not been removed as the stories about what was really happening were horrific.